typical Chinese electric vehicle might have something like a, you know, built-in GPS, uh, onboard microphone for voice activation, um, cameras for, um, you know, uh, emergency braking or, or, you know, lane detection and so on. Yep. Right. Absolutely. So you're saying that, that in theory, at least all of those things could be used to collect data on the user for purposes other than the safety of driving that car. Yes, absolutely. And if you extend it, if you extend it a step further, um, if you think of, you know, um, think of, uh, and, and some of this is in non self-driving cars, um, but there's these things that are called like uh, LIDAR or cameras. So for instance, it will create electronic pictures and not just the visual pictures that like as you, as I look at you went through the camera today, um, but basically radar type pictures, it's like, oh, there's the shape of a rock and here is the bend in the road and stuff like that so that it can recognize when to turn and, and lane markers and things like that, uh, basically radar type pictures. Um, uh, as these cars drive. And so if that data is being um, collected and transported, uh, sent back to China, that's absolutely very real risks. And it also creates risks where if that source code is being created in China, one thing we know about um, Huawei, for an example, um, is it's very difficult to attribute intent. Did you mean to do something? Okay. But one thing we can say about a lot of most Chinese electronic devices is they have little to no security. So are you doing that hoping to hack the device? Well, I can't, it's difficult to attribute intent. We can say, I know that you have put no security in that and it would be very easy for you to um, get into the device. And so- There's a, a plot point in this show that came out about 10 years ago called Person of Interest, which is like this future surveillance state when you have like a, you know, a machine that can sort of read and predict everything through cameras. In one of the episodes, uh, there was a, a plot point where uh, someone's car was electronically taken over and like they couldn't use the brakes and they couldn't steer and, and, the, and there was a, an intentional crash uh, done through, through a sort of software hack. Is that something that now in 2023 could actually happen with a Chinese vehicle or is that still science fiction? That that's so. I should say, in a, in a degree of fairness, that's absolutely possible in um, in electronic vehicles and and definitely self driving vehicles, but really more broadly, electronic vehicles. Um, but it's also it's it's also a lot easier with Chinese vehicles because of the level of security and um, and uh, let's say a security intelligence apparatus like China having the source code. Okay, having the source code. Think about it this way. If you're driving some random car, I have to figure out which car you're driving. Okay, I then have to get into that specific car or something like that. It's at the very least a lot harder to do that than if I say, I know, um, I know Matt is driving a Chinese made uh, vehicle and I have the source code so that I can get into that source code immediately. Okay, and I have the data streaming back to me. OK, so I, where I know where he is, I know um, the car he's driving. I know the security weak deficiencies of the car that he's driving. And so theoretically, if I did something to upset the Chinese Communist Party, like, I don't know, participating in a subversive podcast, uh, it is theoretically possible for them to uh, cause an accident, you know, turn off the airbag and accelerate and turn off the brakes. Right. That's that's abs that's absolutely possible, and you know we can we can say with zero hesitation based upon the data we know they collect on drivers in China with the with the same components of BYD cars, for instance, that get shipped around the world, that they absolutely have the capacity to monitor, record, and and they do monitor and record uh, Chinese drivers um, with those components. Well, you mentioned the truck drivers, and they're limited to certain hours, so you sort of must have some kind of central surveillance that limits that right or is it just the individual trucks so um so there there's there's different systems with with the truck driver um and and and, and again to a degree of fairness we have we have similar um there's similar uh functionality on 18 wheelers in the united states for some for some trucks where basically they are for, as, a, as a simple example and i don't know the trucking regulations but it's something like you as an individual driver are limited to eight hours a day of driving or something like that. 
So you get into the cab of the, of the truck and you log in with either a face or a personal pin code or something like that so that they can say, you're driving eight hours a day. We verified that you're driving eight hours a day and you're not trying to do a 16 hour day and potentially endangering other people. Okay. So, so that's not that's not really the same thing then. That's that's not really the so truck driving systems are not really the same as 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 automobiles. Um, automobiles they 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 absolutely can track um, automobiles in in real time because those uh, you know as a simple example um, most any any modern automobile comes with you know like five G enabled um, um, communication so they can tr they can easily track that car. Um, anywhere and, um, and, you know, identify who's driving that and um, control the mics and different things like that with zero hesitation. Yes. And I think so what, <clears throat> what's particularly sad about this is, uh, you know, a lot of Western countries trying to promote uh, green energy uh, is, is basically empowering China to use this as a weapon. Uh, Australia, I know, is offering uh, big rebates for buying an electric vehicle uh, such that that makes Chinese electric vehicles much cheaper than any other kind of electric vehicle. And so, you know, I know uh, well, it's, well, it's, it's it's for example, like if you to, to buy a, a ch an electric vehicle, you get the rebate right yeah. in Australia. I think it's like six thousand Aussie dollars or something. Uh, and then once you once you factor that in, it might be cheaper to buy an electric vehicle from China than like a standard Toyota Corolla or something. Yeah. That's and similar. we know that the Chinese Communist Party is very interested in controlling Australian society. That, that's, that, yes. was a, that was a huge thing. And uh, particularly the uh, uh, Chinese diaspora right. in Australia. And, but it, I mean, even if it's not surveillance, like think about this, Australia starts to become dependent on Chinese cars. So, you know, uh, other manufacturers aren't sending the cars to Australia. So there's not as many of those. And you have like the maintenance uh, of those Chinese cars all so, sort of have to follow a certain system. So you're sort of building that in and it makes the Australian society more and more dependent on just another aspect of trade with China. And if China goes to war for Taiwan, they have a they have another lever. I'm just imagining the great China car uprising <laughs> in Australia, like all the cars. Like start having a mind. It's of their like own. that movie that was on TV as I when I was a kid that I did. All the cars came to life and killed people, and Talking I about terrified cars, me. The, the Pixar the, the thing. Pixar thing. That's that. That's the sequel to this movie. <laughs> after the cars killed. After, after the made for TV movie you saw. Yeah, as a kid. I wish if anyone watching knows what that is called. It's like just a memory from my childhood. What like what? There was era like a of truck. Movie. It must have been like the eighties or maybe early nineties. There was a truck that had like this gremlin face. I think all the electronic appliances. I want to know what that is. Remind internet. <laughs> tell me. Chris, China's turned off your lights. I know. I wanted to let me I, I'm not sure I have one of those lights that, you know, is is for this type of thing and it just turned off and I'm not sure why. So, um, It's okay. I, oh, I think no, no, I no. think we know exactly why. <laughs> no, no, no. Was let's, it made in China? <laughs> let's let's lean into this. Now now coming to us is this anonymous <laughs> <laughs> uh, person who has a secret. This is very. You'll want to watch because this is exciting. Tell us the secret, anonymous person. We'll call you Mister B. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I mean, I think I think we we should wrap it up. But um, to, just to bring this back to the the Chinese economy, like, is this electric vehicle or green technology going to save China's economy, or is it just not enough? No, it's 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 just not enough, and you're already starting. I mean, uh, these 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 electrical vehicle makers, the battery makers, things like that, um, they're receiving enormous subsidies, and they're still loss making and things like that. Um, and so it's it's you're already starting to see stories pop up of um, the, the, in a similar fashion that the, that there were these basically like bike uh, bike graveyards. Um, you're already starting to see, you know, stories about fields of, um, you know, Chinese EVs that have just been put out to pasture. Um, so it's 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 absolutely uh, it's absolutely uh, not going to save the Chinese economy for sure. But you know, Xi Jinping's five-year semiconductor plan is definitely going to do it. Um, 
<laughs> See, you're just doing that to trigger me now. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the terrible thing about authoritarian systems. You just have like one guy who can be like, hey, I got a great idea. And then everyone has to follow it and can't be like, actually, there are some serious problems with that idea. And that's and that's and that's, you know, look, I, I'm not I'm not trying to defend China, but that's why I like especially with like the Belt and Road or something like that. A lot of these are really just somebody says, hey, I've got an idea and everybody else just nods and agrees. And the next thing you know, there's some crazy idea being pursued. Um, I mean, Chris, you experienced this in China yourself. Like the best thing to do in this scenario is jump on the bandwagon. Yes. To get some of that, those subsidies, right? You know, I will, I will tell you a story. I, I had a student at one time um, and he, and he comes to me and he says, oh, I got a job teaching English to this Chinese tech firm. And I was like, oh, great. Good. So, so I see him and, and he had done a little coding, you know, nothing, nothing serious. Um, uh, you know, had probably taken like one or two coding classes or something like that. And I, and I see him a couple of weeks later and he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm working part time at this tech company. And I was like, oh, great. Teaching English. He's like, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm running their tech stuff. And I was like, wait a minute, they were a tech company. How, how are you running their, their, their tech stuff? He's like, well, they were a, they were a, a tech startup and, but they didn't have anybody that knew how to code. And so they were getting government subsidies. And so I'm teaching them how to code. Wow. Incredible. <laughs> now that's innovation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, thank you for taking the great personal risk to come and speak to us anonymously, <laughs> Mr. B. Um, <laughs> I hope you're protected from the Chinese EVs. Uh, but it's been great having you back on. And if people want to follow you, anonymous Mr. B, <laughs> yes. on platforms such as X, formerly known as Twitter, where can they find you? And and just just as a little as a little piece of advice, um, do uh, to your to your listeners, uh, tell them make sure they do not go on the internet and Google. I'm looking for X. Okay, that all kinds of bad <laughs> results. Okay. Why? What would come up? <laughs> Just a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, so, so where can they follow you on X? Uh, uh, Baldings world. Uh, I'm at uh, the handle Baldings world on, uh, I'm just going to say Twitter. Okay. I, I can't say X. Okay. Just, Baldings I don't think world anybody's saying X. Twitter. Honestly. <laughs> X marks the yeah. spot. I said X, but only to troll you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, yeah, pleasure having you on. Uh, we'll put a link to that below. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. These are very interesting times for China. It's it's that old fake Chinese proverb. May you live in interesting times. <laughs> Said by Deng Xiaoping's cats. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks so much, guys. And thank you for joining us. Uh, remember that name of the movie. F tell me what it is. Uh Want... Maybe we can ask Matt Suit for the name of the movie. Because it's so loud? <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's from, from the, the 80s. 80s. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've been, I've been sitting on a comment about Matt Suit the entire hour-long podcast. Wow. I, it's, it's nice to know that that's what you were focused on this whole time, Shelley. I can multitask. You know, mm. China's economic collapse, killer cars are coming for us all, and Matt is Magnum P.I., Yes. With the mustache and everything. Yeah, just need the sunglasses. Oh, oh I'm sure he's got them. I actually do. <laughs> and once again, I'm Chris Chappell. I'm Shelly Chang. And I'm Matt Ganesta. We'll talk hey, to you. At least Halloween's sorted for you this year, right? It is. Oh.